Sarge had a wide variety of amenities, including but not limited to a Turkish bar, a Russian bar, an archery range, a bowling alley, a casino, a movie theater, a dance hall, and the world's largest indoor swimming pool. The swimming pool and dance hall both extending down the entire city block. The pool have windows in the ceiling that could be open for ventilation purposes. If you were lucky, you could swim on the stars while you saw the dancers dance to a live orchestra on the second floor. Guests in the park familiar are wrapped up in the Yakuza for its amenities. The guests in the Yakuza are put down lots of the park for the own. The pool has since been filled in. It is now a cafe Yakuza to our left. Also to our left, this parking lot was once inside the tennis courts for the hotel. And also, also to our left up ahead, this we hope our Tyson can have a two year worker during this little life movement. She's still alive and kicking at 97 years young. She made Martin Luther King Jr. lunch on multiple occasions. According to her, he didn't eat much, but he loved his sweet tea. King would stay in Lincolnville several times. They were staying in the same place twice due to the bounty on his head. On occasion, he would change chose multiple times throughout the night. We're actually about to cross like a Martin Luther King Jr. Avenue, <coughs> but only two roads named after him, the other being in Atlanta, Georgia, that King himself actually watched down. Lincolnville is a large school activity towards the homes in the state of Florida, but any which are for sale. Including one that was recently taken off the market, one or two of many record in South Historic Orange Plantations, the Yamaha Plantation. Yamaha being seven of orange, it was previously owned by Pippi Duval, half brother to Alexander Duval, half of the three musketeers, and the Count of Monte Cristo. It can be yours to our left, be forewarned, it is a little bit of a fixer upper. But I think you and some friends can fix over your weekends with some drinks. Coming up ahead to our right, this blue building, personal position to some of the war chief Osceola, he was captured during a false flag operation. We would follow his prison train around, attend to his medical needs, until Osceola died of malaria. We knew they remove his head, put it in his doctor's bag, bring him to his office, and preserve it from behind on his desk, while he studied the brain. for the entire city. Today, the small building is the St. Augustine Distillery, producer and proprietor of a wide variety of locally crafted and sourced libations. This whiskey, bourbon, rum, gin, and vodka. The Ice Plant is now a restaurant and vintage bar, still called the Ice Plant, and as it thawed, the cold air would descend, cooling off everything inside. The ice will last you all day, because it was days with ammonia. Miss me. This city offers free tours and a total of very generous for samples. I wouldn't know how generous, because I've got lots of take while on duty. I have had their drink before though, and that is pretty tasty. This is stop 11, remain seated until you hear the bell. Exit to the right, remain to the left, we'll be going down a ladder, pulling off the rails, after you hear the bell. They enter the Union, achieving statehood on 1845. The factory closed down after took on an order, could it be, and is now office space. I have been told they're talking to her to a hotel. Both of them plan to go up in a puff of smoke, but they're cigars. Coming up ahead to our right is the San Sebastian Winery. They too are the producers and proprietors of a wide variety of locally crafted and sourced libations, many of which are made from the local Muscatine grape. If you don't want to take an alcohol, that's fine. They also make a great juice. The winery also offers tours and samples, and has a restaurant on the top floor called The Cellar Upstairs. The only one they have that though, they probably had one to pick up the great juice when they were playing with names. If you weren't even the last tour of the day at the winery, have no fear, our car will come in and give you a verse of water, holding on the rails, after you hear the bell. To the right, rather. Today, this was dormitories for Father College. Father wanted to make St. Augustine the winter getaway for his rich buddies up in New York, but had to figure out how to get everyone down here. At the time, the only way St. Augustine from New York was the first thing multiple trains, followed by 
auto, horse, and buggy or ferry boat for the rest of the way. Both for very long trips and not very pleasant rides. So Father, being the founder of the East Coast Railroad, on the train tracks around Jacksonville, stared down at the gauge and extend the Dallas St. Augustine. Allowing people to board the train in New York and stay in the same train car all the way down here. Just me. By the way, send the train tracks down to Miami, take a look across the bay, figure out was at it, might as well keep going, and made the first overseas railroad that he has the keys. That last effort nearly bankrupted him, but it was completed about two years before his death. The Key West Railroad served its role until 1935, when a hurricane destroyed the train tracks, knocking the, knocking the rails into the ocean. Coming up ahead to our left is the second of all historic orange plantations still remaining, the Brooklyn House. Here is the old woman Dr. Andrew Anderson, first of the descendant of Henry Fogger and Barrist in Augustine. Today is Owen Father College and has been restored. Still, Misty was once the largest producer of oranges in the United States. Despite the fact that the oranges are native to Florida, they were brought here from Spain. They have left the name reservations. This is because he had less than eight rooms for the furniture available. When he called and asked what the deal was, somehow his furniture had ended up in New York. The hotel didn't even last, the hotel didn't even last the season, and he was forced to sell for pennies in the dollar to Henry Fogler, who now had not one, not two, but three luxury hotels, all in the same city block, but all ran next door to each other. Fogler renamed it into the Cordova Hotel, and since been re-reading back to the Casa Monica, and is still a hotel. You don't need to pump juice on the plaza. You can just show up when you want to dress, and you're good to go. Excuse me. So, if I tell I ask you, why is it you can show up when you want to dress, and it's fine, but I show up when I want to dress, they call the cops on me. <clears throat> he plaza is more properly referred to as the Plaza de la Constitución, made of the white pillow coming up to our left, the Plaza de la Constitución. These pillows were erected to all the Spanish colonies, during Spain's brief attempt at democracy. It didn't quite work out, though, as the monarchy regained power shortly afterwards, and order also to be destroyed. However, Florida being Florida, we decided we didn't get the memo, so it was one of the only remaining pillars of its kind. For the first system of standardized weights and measurements was introduced to the United States. The winter marketplace is actually still in use today. Those are all over the plaza, and the cannon. 
their bolts are originally loose. Eventually, they rolled together with safety precaution because people kept stealing the cannonballs, either hiding them by Easter eggs or throwing them off the bridge. Personally, I would see the appeal in either of those things, but they must have really had a ball. If they weren't careful, they might have also had a blast. Coming up ahead to our right, this great building is Eternity Parish, the first parish of the Episcopal denomination in the United States. Built right all the time, Florida became the United States territory. And further ahead to our right is the oldest street in St. Augustine, and by extension to the nation, originally the King of Spain's city plan, Adelaide Street. Down it is a wide variety of stores, restaurants, and museums, such as our Spanish Military Hospital Museum, but I'm told it's a very good Cuban restaurant. Raven is funded for all ages, 
save their late night show, Forerunners, which is in fact rated R. But Josie doesn't think it's that one. I almost destroyed their crew, but didn't quite work out. Hard to do the special complex, but also because of the answer being sick of shanty, I just couldn't hit those high seats. Exit to the right, like going down a ladder, pulling off the rails, after you hear the bell. Wait for the bell. <clears throat> Those of you joining us, hello. Remain seated while we were in motion. Keep your limbs inside at all times. Keep your hands, your belongings, animals, and children. If you drop something from before you dropped it, because I can't retrieve it. Uh, this red and yellow building is the tallest building in St. seen, Built in the late 1920s, the Treasury Building. Upon completion, it caused a similar outcry through the city skyline. After which ordinances are passed, forbidding any new structures to be over 35 feet tall to provide lane for local aesthetic. To a right, you will see one is called the Bridge of Lions. The two bubble lines guard the entrance. Hope that they say bubbles like Michelangelo David and donate to the city for Dr. Andrew Anderson. The lines have names, firm and faithful. I could tell you I know which is which, but I'd be lying. Coming up ahead to our left, you'll see a group of the small houses. Those are not independent buildings, but the Hilton Hotel. The Hilton went again around those ordinances after the Treasure Building was built. And ahead to our right is the Matendas Bay Inlet, where the ocean meets the bay. Don't look to the bay. And the inlet itself is the artificial one. Don't look to the engineers. Don't look to the bay. And don't look to the ocean. Do not interact with each other. Whether or not this is on accident or on purpose, who can say? Coming up to our right once again is the Castillo de los Tebarcos. Our first third fortification made in Coquina, Monta and Sasha Island across the bay. Cannonballs are reported to have developed on the walls, or skin looks like a sponge, due to the nature of Coquina being a soft stone. In the middle of the night, so as we go down on to harvest these cannonballs, but they are replashed the walls, and in the morning it looked like no damage was done, as the cannonballs were returned to the center from the fort's own cannons. This is stop 17, the fort. Remain seated until you hear the bell. Exit to the right, like you're going down a ladder, holding on to the rails, after you hear the bell. This nice spot provisions inside, while it's so sheltered within the walls. Surrounding the boat are the various hills, designed in such a way you can't see inside the boat from the bay. The four is never taken in battle, only signed over in paperwork, proving the pen is mired in the sword, and it all is equal to the cannon. <coughs> now let's talk about William Borden. Co-founder of Standard Oil with Henry Fonda and John Rockefeller. Like many big jokes at the time, he too wanted to win to hold down St. Augustine. So around 1887, he had the Warren Mature Estate, also known as Warren Castle Belt. He needed a home for himself, his wife, and his 14 kids. Of those 14 kids, 13 of them were daughters. He had room for everyone, but, only on, but he only had one bathroom inside. After his death, the castle was purchased by Paul's prize winning author, Roger Keaton Rowling, also the Ewing, who could have run into an inn with her apartment on the top floor. One of her guests was Robert Ripley, who loved the place so much for staying there, he asked if he could buy the whole thing. She turned her down. Ripley would stay there every season, though, every season asking to buy, being declined, until his stubbornness would pay off about two years after his death, when his estate was finally able to purchase it. Ripley was an American cartoonist, world traveler, and collector of oddities, who went to this place collection and he referred to as an auditorium. This auditorium, over the 1950s, all right, Ripley's believe it or not museum. A self-guided collection of various knickknacks, thingamajigs, who's a what's it, thingamabobs, and doohickeys from all over the world. So much so they couldn't fit it all in the building, they had to put the things for what's it outside, which you'll see very shortly coming up to our right. And to our right, his lawn was cut from a redwood tree that was four times as tall as the Treasury Building downtown. It is a hollowed out into a four-room house. No bathroom, though. For that, you will go to a different tree. The tree was cut down after it was struck by lightning. Further ahead to our right, we had the Massacre Anchor, an original anchor to tote the Tennis Bay. And even further ahead to our right, this horse is made entirely from coal car bumpers, built to commemorate the Denver Broncos' victory against the Giants in the Super Bowl. Ask me if they won that game.
original TV show was filmed. Inside you'll find shrunken heads, orbs and so grains of rice and heads of nails, a model of the space station made entirely from toothpicks, and so much more, it's unbelievable. And just coming up to our right, the most unbelievable thing in all of it, please, the gift shop. Almost as unbelievable as that, this is stop 18. We're being seated until you hear the bell, exit to the right like you're going down a ladder, holding on the rails after you hear the bell. Wait for the bell. Those of you leaving, have a good day. Park Gear Street in this location for the Ghost of Greystone store. 